Travis Hansen rarely takes an off day, has a passion for basketball. You could see it at BYU back in the early 2000s. Former Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year, drafted 37th overall by the Atlanta Hawks in the 2003 NBA draft. And, of course, it's carried over to his play overseas. But his real passion is away from the game with his Little Heroes Foundation, something he hopes will change the world. That change is already taking shape thousands of miles away. Kathy Aiken has this Sports Beat Spotlight. Travis Hansen held a basketball camp for young players last week. For 12-year-old Mason James, it was a chance to improve his game. I wanted to learn more about it so I can become a good NBA player. Eight-year-old Abby Rustand was one of many girls who signed up as well. Why did you come to the basketball camp? Well, it's just that because I love basketball and I really like the NBA team. Everything go okay? For Hanson, it was a chance to promote the game he loves. The camp is going fantastic. We love the kids. We're so thankful that they, that they came and, and spent the time with us, learned about fundamentals. Yay! The camp was also a chance for Hanson to promote his true love, Little Heroes Foundation. The foundation started two years ago when he and his wife helped improve orphanages and a children's hospital in Russia, where Travis was playing. While that continues on, the foundation's newest project is opening schools in Mali, Africa. The first school opened two weeks ago. If, if you've seen the video, all the kids dancing, they're really, really excited to have an opportunity to get an education. You have mixed feelings, your joy, happiness, and then also a little bit overwhelmed by how much people don't have and how much they need and how much work that's going to take. Put that in there, zip it up. To help with the work, his campers helped fill bags of school supplies, a service project of sorts, and the kids were more than willing to help. There's kids in Africa that need stuff. We um, put like crayons, pencils, colored pencils, a cup, soap, and pens. And it feels really good to help friends even though we, don't, we barely even know them. Ye Samaki is the mayor of Walesabugu in Mali and a BYU graduate. There are 44 villages with a total of 70,000 people in his area. Samaki said this first school is the first in this particular village and having one so close means more than we can imagine. They do up to 12 miles a day. Going back, going to school for morning classes, coming back home for lunch, going back again for afternoon classes and coming back. By the end of the day, exhausted. So it really affects their performance. And these supplies will affect the family's bottom line. In Mali, a family's average income is $330 a year. This will send children to school, keep the money in their family for food, so it means a lot. So we truly appreciate these children. The students in Africa are appreciative as well. Little Heroes has committed to building one school a year in Mali, and Hansen says seeing the smiles on the children's faces never gets old. Kids are the best. Kids are, are the future, and, and uh, no, it's just, we love kids. We love seeing them so happy and having a good time. Well said. We're delighted to have Travis joining us live right now with Radine Hatfield, the CEO of their Little Heroes Foundation. Radine, nice to see you. Nice to meet Trav, you. Travis, always, yes, nice to have you back in Thank town you. and back on the show. Let's start with the beginnings of Little Heroes, and I guess it started in Russia. Tell us about the beginning, the first idea. Well, the very beginning um, in Russia, volunteering at orphanages, uh, and my wife uh, spent a lot of time holding the babies. and. And it came to, you know, we just felt very inspired to, to try to do something to help these kids have a better, you know, better life, better opportunity. We had to do something. So we created a family foundation at, at the beginning to, to kind of get our friends together to help. Um, came back home, helped a few kids, helped, helped a few kids with surgeries, liver transplant, cleft lips, and renovated a, a children's hospital. Came back home and uh, went to Bajio restaurant. We ran into a good friend of ours now, Eric Graves, who works for Nature Sunshine. And, uh, and then, you know, everything just boomed from there. And then Nature Sunshine is our corporate, big corporate sponsor, has been phenomenal, uh, helped us, you know, do a lot more with, with what we had, gave us a tremendous amount of resources, and, and they've, been, uh, they've been unbelievable. So now, you know, we're building schools in Mali. We've got a great CEO with Radin, and, and, um, and then we've got a lot more events coming up. Radin, tell us about your experience here, your first year now uh, since you've come in. What have you been impressed? Obviously, Travis is a, a well-rounded young man, yeah. we'll say. Yeah, it's been a great <laughs> opportunity. Um, 
Years ago, I dreamt of being involved in nonprofit work, and this is really a dream come true. The opportunity with Little Heroes Foundation is amazing. Um, with with Travis's experience and his network, and then the opportunity to do good with kids around the world, it's great. Nature Sunshine has been wonderful. They actually traveled with us a couple of weeks ago to Mali where we opened our school, and it was, it was really exciting to be there and to be part of, of an effort to make a difference in the world. And uh, clearly, uh, you know, you're, you're involved at a high level. Uh, moving forward, what does this kind of stuff do? This, what you're doing in Mali, and, and moving forward, how, how will this help others? Well, uh, Little Hero's mission is to inspire the hero within each person. And we're really working right now, and, and Larie Hansen is working mm -hmm. on putting together a children's book that will teach children that each of them have the power to make a positive difference in the world. And, you know, we saw that at the basketball camp last week. These little kids come and they're thinking basketball, but while they're there, they learn about kids in Mali, Africa who, you know, don't have pencils to go to school. And, and they were inspired. They were amazing. They, we, I didn't think they'd all want to participate, and every single one of them did in the service project. And it was, it was a lot of fun. I can read it on your face, and I know Travis has done a lot of tremendous things on the basketball court, but this uh, must evoke all kinds of better, higher level emotions from you. Uh, uh, Radine, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on and talking to us and sharing a little bit of your experience with the Little Heroes. And uh, right now it's time to talk about Travis' basketball career. And like all of us, the former Cougar, very happy to hear Coach Rose is beating his pancreatic cancer. I've been hit with a, a challenge, but it's a challenge that is manageable. Everything that you go through in life helps you to become a better person and this experience will help me become a better person. It'll stretch me, it'll make me um, appreciate things more. Travis, of course, played for Coach Rose before he took over as head coach, but you guys have stayed close. And I know we got in touch with you when you were in Hawaii before you found out the, the, the guarded good news that obviously he has more work to do, but it, it looks like uh, he is cancer clear right now. Yeah, I mean, he's he's one of my best friends. He's been an absolutely phenomenal coach and supporter of mine, you know, throughout the years. And it was just a shock when, when we heard that uh, he had cancer. And, and I felt so bad for his wife, Cheryl, and his family. But it, he's a fighter, and he's such a great guy. And we're so happy that he's, you know, feeling better as of now, Not no, no traces of cancer. And, and uh, you know, he's so tough and, and such a good guy. He, he uh, you know, kept his commitment to come to my camp and speak with the kids and, and uh, we just love him to death. Obviously, he's had a big role in the early part of your career. Tell us where you are right now. I know it's offer time all the way around, and you're hearing from all, I guess, continents, huh? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, me and my wife are real busy with the foundation, but so we let our agent, you know, you know, Bill Duffy, do all the work. But we, we got some gr great offers. You know, uh, we love Europe. We've had a phenomenal time there. They treat us very well. So. Greece, Spain, they are in the picture, and then we've got a couple teams on the East Coast here in the NBA that that we're talking to and they're in, that are interested. So here in the next couple of weeks, I think we'll, you know, together as a family, find out what's the best thing for us and our kids, and, and make the decision. Real Madrid is in the mix, so there could be a meeting with the Jazz in October, which would be special. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Real Madrid is definitely in the mix, and and um, that would be fun to to play against Andre, Karolinko, and Darren and the boys. You know, yesterday I was golfing with Darren and trying to raise some money for his foundation, so it'd be fun to play him. It'd but you want to be back in the NBA, don't you? Isn't that the ultimate goal, if it's the right deal and right for your family? Um, and the NBA would be nice, you know, it'd definitely be good for, for, for a lot of reasons, but, but Europe has treated us really well. Athens, Greece does not, <laughs> does not sound too bad to me, so, you know, ultimately my wife, she's the big boss, she'll, she'll cry, you know. We all, we all know that rule. Yeah, yeah, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Thank thanks you. so much for coming in. It's great to catch up with you. Great work with the Little Heroes.